Hi everybody. Hey, check it out. Angela here with the Geddes Ministries. Um, I've been on a roll lately talking about all the different areas of sexual immorality and what thereof every single detail. But we're going to take an intermission from that for a minute because of the season that we're in this month. It's just, it's pushed me to uh, just speak out. So Halloween, let's just dive in because my heart is with children and the elderly. And the word of God says, if you do this unto the least of these, you do it unto me. Now, I'm not going to be quoting those scriptures because I actually don't think this particular holiday and the substitutes we use really need me to have any quoted scriptures to correct you. I think the one thing I will beckon you to do is to do your research about what Halloween is about. The day before Halloween is Devil's Night. Uh, for those who didn't know, understand fully exactly what this whole holiday is about and recognize that we don't need a substitute for darkness. We don't need to entertain anything that can give us uh, a little room to justify it because of our kids. I think a lot of us, and I have a daughter, yes, and I raised her, and I did not celebrate Halloween. Back then, yes, I did not know the Word of God like I know it now, so I was looking for substitutes. Church had substitutes, so I took the substitutes of, you know, we called it Hallelujah Night. And we were supposed to dress positive, not negative, not dark, not evil. So in hindsight, you know, I think about it and I'm like, we as adults, we eventually we grow up and it's like going on a diet. When you go on a diet, you know, there's Nutrisweet and there's all these shakes and substitutes for having something that's not healthy. And we think, oh, that's, the, that's it. And then sure enough, that didn't do anything to change our lifestyle. All it did was substitute till we got to a certain point where we thought we were happy in our body. And then we turned around and went back to the same habits because we were just pacifying ourselves. And that's with anything in life. We don't need to be pacifying ourselves. I think if we really learn what the demonic, uh, reality is of Halloween, we probably won't patronize it with something that could be substituted. I think if we spend, and this is just me, y'all could do whatever you want. I'm just keeping it 100. Like I said, you know what? The word of God says, what does light have to do with darkness? So even when we are trying to find a substitute to like digest it and make it a little bit more palatable so that our children will not suffer like all the other kids get to dress up and it just seems so much fun. That's the same way the devil is with us. He's not going to give us a package that's not going to be attractive. It's not going to be tempting. He's not going to come out with a pitchfork and horns and all the red fire and blazing and all the stuff. He's not going to do that. He's going to make sure he bring a pre presentation to draw you near. Now, these are the things I have learned. For one, it's a pagan holiday. We don't need to substitute a pagan holiday. We need to be raising our children to be leaders, to be warriors. In the body of Christ, in these day and ages, the world is getting darker. It's getting scarier, and it's not nice. It's not going to be kind to our children because we're trying to find substitutes because we don't want to deal with the pressures of their disappointment when they can't entertain doing what all the other kids are able to do. I think we fall into that whole thing where, where kids say, well, they're doing it. Why can't I? And then the church said, well, we'll come up with a substitute so you can do something good, not bad. The thing is, we can't live our lives raising our kids on finding ways to substitute um, some holiday that is designed for darkness. If anything, we need to be studying up on what that holiday means and what it's about and share the reality and the darkness of that with our children to a point of their understanding, that is. Uh, not every child can relate, but I'm saying to a point of their understanding, they see the witches, the demons, the goblins. So that's even as a little one-year-old kid. They've got babies that they're not even able to walk and they're carrying them around in, in dark costumes. So for the ones of understanding, you know when your children can comprehend and understand what you're addressing to them. But for the children that can understand I'm saying, talk to them about this topic. You know, bring this topic up and let them understand where the root of all this comes from. Let your children grow up detesting the mere idea. That is 
the point of this whole video right now is I pray that parents will come together and help their children detest the mere idea of wanting to have anything to do with a substitute, the holiday, just literally scratch it off as another day and just can't wait for the day to be over. Kids talk about it. Raise your children to say, what does light have to do with darkness? I'm a Christian. I just don't celebrate it. You know, my father raised us back in the day you know a guy would ask you what's your sign that was like a flirting thing to kind of get to know you and people still do it when they ask for your birthday because they're trying to zodiac you and it's not god so my father would always tell us that if they ask that question tell them that your sign is the cross is christ don't give out no zodiac we're not into zodiacs we don't entertain that so i grew up telling people that if you're asking, or a guy, if he's asking that kind of question, um, I tell him, no, mine is the blood of Jesus, honey. I don't do the Zodiac. Don't even put me in the category where you can weigh out my character or my personality or anything about me based on some Zodiac description of me. Now, some of them, yeah, they come pretty close. But what I'm talking about is learning how to train your children in Christ. There's absolutely no festival, no holiday, no nothing that has anything to do with witches, demons, and goblins in the body of Christ at all. And yes, of course, we have substitutes. We have uh, other things we could do. This whole video is just to, I implore you parents, listen, please, train your children to be leaders. This world is dark and it's ugly out there. And it'll do everything it can. If we pacify our children now, by the time they become adults, if we're worried about what's going on in the world and how evil the world is today, oh, just wait until our children are grown and they're not able to digest all this stuff. And they start to go with the flow because they were not trained to be warriors from the start. We need to train our children to understand what the truth is. They need to know what this is about. They need to realize why we say no to the devil, why we say no to justifying it. We don't need a neutral sweet substitute. We need to walk away from it. We need to raise our children to the point that they say, yuck, this is gross. I don't want to have anything to do with witches, demons, or goblins. That is what we need to be imposing into our children children's lives and into their hearts. It's a, a, a total disdain for this season when it comes to uh, darkness and, and witches and demons. Do you know the day before um, Halloween, now again this is up north and I think I've already said this, the day before Halloween is called Devil's Night. I don't know if any other state acknowledges this, but people that are from the north, they've heard this. Devil's Night is when people who call themselves witches, warlocks, and in black magic, etc., etc., they all get together, and that is the night, the eve, like we have Christmas Eve. That is the eve of the night where they get together and they do all their demonic rituals, sacrifices. I heard it's supposed to be sacrificing a virgin, but of course in this day and age, if that was heard, they'd be arrested. And they usually do it on their own properties or somewhere in the woods. And they do their full candlelight ceremony. But a lot of them say they sacrifice cats. They do this kind of thing. And it's not, it's nothing wrong. I think killing anything, period, that's just insanity. But the whole thing is it's a demonic holiday that has a precursor day called Devil's Night. It does not get any darker than that. Having our children entertain the idea of justifying it with a holiday that is supposed to be another day later for the church to play with the kids and hang out and give them candy and wear the, wear the costumes. I would say, please, we need to have a day that has nothing to do with this month at all. Why don't the church just have a hallelujah night that has nothing to do with this month at all? I don't care. Pick November, pick December, I don't know, pick July. Pick some day, a month, that doesn't have any correlation with showing that you're going out of your way to substitute them. Because to children, our children don't need to be pacified. We're not in a day and age. This is not the 50s where when our children grow up, it'll be the 60s. We are in a new millennium. We are in the day, uh, days and age of technology, meaning we're going to have to stay on top of a lot of things that we probably didn't want to have to be forced to deal with, especially with our children. Our children now, they're exposed to everything in social media. When I started learning, kids are getting caught up into politics because social media is now 
posting it so aggressively that kids were getting emotional about the president and we didn't used to have all that so our kids today they're a little bit way more advanced than who our kids were back in the day so we don't have the liberties to go pacifying our children saying you know okay well you can't have this no we need to educate them we need to dig in we need to do our homework we need to study what the understanding of this is so much that the conviction in our own hearts as parents should say i can't stand the idea of trying to substitute could you imagine what the father and what jesus think when they see us trying to find ways to emulate the world or mock the world but then try to sugarcoat it softly and make it acceptable i don't get it i mean maybe i'm grown okay i get that but i don't get that we can't train our children to have a disdain for that would you say it's okay and i'm talking to the body of christ now i am not talking to parents who do not uh live by the word of God who is not trying to claim themselves as Christians born again. I'm not talking to them. I am talking to the body of Christ. Let me make that exceedingly clear. So for everyone else, this does not pertain to you and your kids at all. But you're welcome to listen because you may just get delivered from having your children out there hanging with the devil. Just saying, food for thought. Now, what I was told is the costumes, and this is, I did some research years ago because I worked in the youth ministry on the, uh, the bus ministry back at Church on the Move in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so I did some research because I was told to give out information and literature to parents so that they could be more informed as to why we don't celebrate the holiday. And that was the church that had Hallelujah Night. Again, I was very young. I didn't really know the scriptures that well. So I went to the library. I did my research. I started learning and looking up on Halloween. And they said that in the demonic realm, demons wanted the freedom to be themselves. They did not want to have to come into a human form in order to walk and roam the earth. Uh, there were many that were short and they were little like trolls and demons that just really wanted the leisure to let their ugly show for what it was freely. And so Halloween, became another vessel for darkness to have demons roam the earth. Again, this was just in my research. I can't say that that's validated as true for facts or not. All I'm saying is when I went to the library back in those days, because we didn't have Google, I found this in the research of a demonic and occult book that had all of the history about the pagans and what the holiday mean and the druids and the witches and the black magic and all of that encompasses itself in this holiday we call Halloween. And as Christians, we try to find our substitute, our sweet and low to our neutral sweet to get around the reality of dealing with the fact that we just need to tell our children, this is of the devil. This is not of us. We have nothing to do with darkness. Children, you are children of the light. You are children that are spoken for by God. And a lot of us have de devoted our children. We did dedication in church and have dedicated our children and had them prayed over by the church, holding us accountable as godly parents living by the Bible to raise our children right. Us even more so need to be firm with learning the background of what this whole Halloween is about. We need to be able to be better informed. We need to understand what this is about. A lot of us are out here looking at it like it's no big deal. You're making too much out of it. You're being too religious. Let me tell you something. This world is getting dark and uglier. And the more you keep finding excuses to defend darkness, the devil's just going to keep taking you down for a ride. And pretty soon, you're going to be going along with the flow. And you will be so far away from Christ. The only thing you'll have to represent Christ is the day you walk into the church on the weekends. So I'm just make, making it plain and keeping it real. If we don't gird up and train our children now, we do not have children from yesterday. We have children that are far more advanced. They're indulging and watching and seeing things behind our back. They're seeing things on their cell phones. Yes, we give them cell phones with access to every ungodly ability to see whatever. And if your children have a block on it, their friends may not. So there's always an opportunity. They can go to school. They can go anywhere and gain access to information that we would never want our children to be exposed to. So please, don't put on the blinders saying, not my Timmy, or not my Becky, or not my Laquita. No, don't put on your blinders. These kids are far more advanced. So we need to gird up and we need to be educated. 
We need to tell them the truth, that this is not a holiday that we entertain, nor are we trying to sweeten low it and get ourselves another holiday or the next day or the day before just so that we can appease our children, teach our children proper ways to live for God, teach them the things that are evil, let them grow to hate it. We're teaching our children how to substitute stuff because we don't want the pressure of dealing with society and our children complaining and giving us a hard time and saying, I hate you, I don't ever wanna to talk to you again, you're too religious, I don't wanna have nothing to do with your God anymore. Don't listen to that, ignore it. Take it as a badge of honor and say, that's fine. You can hate me today, but I'm gonna do the will of God. And I'm not trying to find no soft way to pacify this because you're gonna grow up and you're not gonna need these training wheels. You're gonna to need to be strong. And I can't do that if I keep finding ways to pacify you, pacify my neighbors and society and try to hide because I don't wanna deal with the ridicule of the world giving me a hard time being so religious. You are not religious. You are a person that lives under the word of God and you are obedient to the word of God that nothing in the Bible supports black magic, witchcraft, palm readings, demons, witches, and goblins on this holiday. Nothing about it needs to be substituted. It does not need to be supported. We need to be educating our children and running away from it. I hope this has been informative to you. That's all I wanted to say today because I just feel that our children are lost and we are held accountable for everything that we do. And again, I, I say this one more time. He says, if you do this unto the least of these, you're doing it unto me. You are the one who takes care of your children. So remember that when you're out there saying it's no big deal and you come up with your substitute your sweet and low your neutra sweet ex party to uh, sc escape and say it's nothing wrong with that check your heart read the word of god study learn find out more about what this is there's no substitute for sin we can't justify this our children are going to grow up always looking for an opportunity to have an escape from dealing with reality or something to substitute it. We need to train our children to be warriors. That's all I wanted to share today. God bless. Peace out.